Beware the Ides of March in Triangular UAPs, a panel discussion. Episode 14 of the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. Welcome to the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. Coming to you from the glacial dumping grounds known as the Michigan Basin, I'm Michelle. And I'm Wayne. And we are a Michigan-based husband and wife educator and podcasting duo that after having a UFO sighting in March of 2018, have started to examine UFOs and other paranormal topics within Michigan and beyond. Topics include UFOs, the paranormal, conspiracy theories, ghosts, alternative history and archaeology, cryptids, and all things strange and paranormal. So sit back, grab a drink, and come along with us on this journey down the paranormal rabbit hole. Hey everybody, we're back. Hello everyone. Oh man, do we got a great show for you guys and a great panel discussion. Yeah, great show after being back for the first week in the classroom. Yeah, and it's really funny how this all came together, and I do want to talk about that, even though we mentioned it a little bit in the interviews, but in our post-interview discussion, there's a few things I want to talk about. But first thing I want to do is ask you, Michelle, how'd you enjoy that nap you just took? Okay, so something really weird must have happened with last night's discussion because numerology (laughs) seemed to be a little bit of the discussion towards the end, and... The time of 3.33 kept coming up, but 3.30, 3.33, but specifically 3.33. So, so what time did you wake up from your nap? Well, here's the thing. It's been, it's been a long week, and even before then, I had professional development and was working in my room, so I've been tired. So yes, I took a nap. Right. But I woke up from the nap. This afternoon. And just happened to flip my phone over. Yeah. And it was 3.33. Imagine that. Could not get a (laughs) screenshot of my phone fast enough before it turned to 3.34. So I yelled at Wayne. I'm like, what time What time do you think it is? He's like, 3.33. So Yeah, because I had just looked at my computer when I heard you yell, what did I just wake up to? And I looked and I saw it said 3.33 and then it flipped. To 334 right yeah. on my computer. These guys jinxed me last night with the time that I was destined to wake up oh, well, from the snap to today. Well, um, Guy jinxed me as well. And when you listen to the interview, there's a point toward the end of the panel discussion. It's not an interview. It's a panel discussion. discussion but he says, good luck with your editing or something like that. And then come to find out that Zoom decided to do some really weird things with all of the separate tracks. Because everybody in the Zoom call had their own separate track. Well, it recorded everybody out of sync. So I had to manually go and splice the tracks to get everything lined up. It was the weirdest thing. I've never seen that happen before. He was doing so, all this while I was sleeping peacefully. <laughs> yeah. Four hours later, 2 a.m., I finally finished just editing the panel discussions. So what a, what an insane start to the school year, an insane panel discussion. Well, you go to bed at 2 a.m. Didn't you wake up shortly afterwards? Yeah, pretty much. At what time? What time did I wake up? Eight o'clock. No, I thought you woke up after you Oh, came. oh, you mean like right after I went to bed? Yeah, yeah I woke up. It was 3.33. Okay, so time to play the lottery? <laughs> <laughs> we play, play the lottery. Straight. What are you talking about? Play it boxed. <laughs> I know I'm hoping for an early retirement. All right. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's just jump into this. So everybody, this is crazy. We added about 400 new members in the last seven days to our Facebook group. And that is just amazing. You guys are legends. Thank you for sharing us out. That supports us and helps support the podcast and lets us know that you want us to keep doing these discussions. So thank you to everyone out there that is supporting the podcast and just found out as well that we are now listened to in over 64 countries. Absolutely amazing. Woohoo! We're traveling without traveling. (laughs) 
And also, just a reminder for everybody, we do have a merch store where you can pick up swag. The link is on our Facebook group page and also on our public Facebook page. So if you're interested in that and you want some original artwork that is done by my daughter, you can check the show notes or our group page or our Facebook public page for those links. All right, Michelle, since we have quite the lengthy panel discussion, why don't we go ahead and jump into some news? Yeah, and news is a little different today. So let's see what the news is all about today. Yes. What is in the news? So recently it was spotted on a Facebook group in the Downriver area called Downriver and Friends, a story from a young lady about a sighting that she had had somewhere between the South Gate and Lincoln Park area. Now, since the time of that posting and the numerous comments on that thread, including a post of my own with a link to our Facebook and podcast page, that post has come down. So I am making a plea during the news today. If you are part of the Downriver community, whether it's Southgate, Lincoln Park, Wyandotte area, and you witnessed a current sighting of something unknown. So whether it was what was in that photo and the video that was shared or something of your own account, please reach out to us. So if you have that story and you want to tell it, we want to talk to you. You can reach us, reach out to us at mi.ufo.podcast at gmail.com. Send us a brief story of the experience, and we want to get back with you so that we can get you or your story on the show. Yeah, and if you type everything out, we will read it. You don't necessarily have to come on the show, but if you would like to, we could set something up, but absolutely. Well, and it was since that posting and me just doing a copy and paste of our of our group onto the Down River and Friends that that 400 plus members jump is what happened because of that one post. So a mm-hmm. lot of people were commenting on that post, but now, now it it's has, gone. It's disappeared. Yeah. So don't know if uh, maybe the owners of that group it, took it, it down. It or... could have been the original poster who took right. it down. And I know that she's within the group. So hopefully she's listening. And she it, did some amazing videos. Yeah, it could have been admin, but the, the videos, you can't argue with those videos. Yeah, they're fantastic. All right, Michelle, I think we're going to jump into some shout outs. Yes, it is time to give our shout outs. Okay, first up we have... We're going to go over to the UK and give a shout out to Phenomenon Magazine, the world's most recognized e-zine of its kind. The magazine investigates the whole realm of the strange, profound, unknown, and unexplained, delving into paranormal, the UFOs, cryptids, parapsychological, and 14 events. The magazine can be downloaded every month for free. That's right. It's free. It's just a PDF. All you have to do is go to the website and download it. So check out the show notes for the link to the magazine. We will be featured in an upcoming episode of the e-zine. We're just waiting for final details on that. And we will definitely give information when that is available. Next, we've got the Lost in the Dark podcast hosted by Burton and Aaron. This is a pretty cool podcast that bills itself as an attempt to capture incredible conversations between best friends as we explore all our passions, but especially music in the world of heavy metal. So if you're into paranormal investigations and loud heavy metal music, give them a listen. Strong language, but it's heavy metal and the paranormal. What else would you expect? And then lastly tonight, we have Cosmographia, the Randall Carlson podcast. It is their mission to investigate and document the catastrophic history of the world and the evidence for advanced knowledge in earlier cultures. You will also learn of the profound effect it has on human civilization, both past and future, its relevance to Earth herself, and how to successfully cope with the inevitable changes that are sure to visit our dynamic geocosmic system. Okay, so it's... 
been a little while since we had a story come t- into the show, and this was shared, and it is public record. Um, so as part of Communication Corner tonight, I would like to share with you a submission that had went into MUFON. Felicia writes, In March 1994, a fellow co-worker and I carpooled together to work in Brighton, Michigan. The week that this incident happened, it was her time to drive. So usually when the other would drive, the other would take a nap. So that was what I was doing when I woke up to a whirring noise, sounding like a womb, womb, womb. And the full-size van with camper on top was spinning around and around. But it seemed as though we were still and it was spinning around. I also noticed that there was a bright white cloud surrounding us. It was bright like a light. I also observed my co-worker was acting like she was in a trance of some kind, looking straight ahead, and when she would turn the steering wheel from left to right, the van would move side to side as though no ground was underneath. Then I blacked out. Next thing I remember is coming down from the sky in an incline at top speed, very fast toward oncoming traffic. Then all of a sudden we stopped. Neither one of us moved our seats. We were still. I looked back to see if we could back up and go the way we were going or go back to the last exit and turn around and head to work. But when I looked back, it was as though we were in a huge football field lit up with very bright colors, reds, yellows, greens, and oranges. Keep in mind, this happened around 4 a.m. and was pitch dark at this time in the winter. We decided to go to the last exit we had just passed and turn around to head to work since we were not harmed. During this time, there was a lot of traffic. No one stopped to help, or the incident didn't stop traffic at all. It was as though no one saw us. Well, when we got to our jobs, we were one hour late. We had left in plenty of time for work, so we should not have been late. But what bothered me the most is how some co-workers that followed the same highway saw the craft. Several eyewitnesses said it was massive. I put two and two together and realized that we were in it, and the strangest thing of this whole incident is that I became pregnant with my oldest son, who is now 17 years old. So for those listening, the young lady that is spoken of in the upcoming discussion panel with Guy Merritt, um, her story is the one that I have just read that was accounted for within the MUFON site. Yeah, so, she uh, submitted that story to the MUFON site. So and, this way you have a frame of reference and a little bit more detail through her perspective. Right, and Guy also spoke to this um, in episode four and how disturbing it was, but you guys will be able to listen in on this and he- hear it again in the panel discussion. I think after hearing that story, I think we should just go ahead and jump into the panel discussion. It's time for a talk with the the guys. So we're going to have Guy Merritt, Alex, and Ed. So everybody sit back and hold on to your hats because it's about to get really, really crazy. Enjoy the discussion. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very special podcast. This is our very first ever Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters podcast roundtable with actually five, if you count myself and Michelle, UFO experiencers who have had some type of a strange experience or sighting, and it just gets weirder and weirder. Every time we look at the UFO topics and talk to people and the emails that we get with stories. So we figured, you know what, we got to bring everybody together and have a conversation. So Guy, why don't you go ahead and start, do a brief introduction, and then we'll go Alex and Ed. Yeah, well, 
I was with you and Michelle, I believe, on episode number four. Yep, episode four. Yep, and we talked about on March 18th of 1994, about, I don't know, four miles south of the Flint metropolitan area. I was driving, actually, I was driving across uh, an overpass on Bristol Road, which is by Bishop Airport. And from the uh, height of that overpass, I saw these two brilliant white lights on the southern horizon south of the airport, really low, and thought it was a cargo plane or something, except the lights were kind of an odd color of white. And uh, proceeded to come off of that overpass, and then I couldn't see him. Then I went two or three miles south, made a curve. There's a, I was I took US 23, which I 75 and US 23 split up right there by the airport. I bared to the right and took US 23, went a few miles. The, the, the freeway curves to the west for about a quarter of a mile, it becomes very rural. And at that point, I could see those lights really clearly. This thing was almost on the ground, whatever it was. I couldn't see the form of it, but the lights were kind of a strange color of white and they were shimmering. They were like almost like balls of light. And they were, I curved to the south and I was lined up with this thing. And it was just to the right. The nearest light was just to the right of the southbound lanes in which it was driving. So it was basically, it was darn near right above the freeway. It was just to the right of it. And I got panicked because it was so low. It was almost touching the tops of a grove of trees. And uh, I, I would estimate it was about 200 foot by 200 foot by 200 foot. I looked up uh, the size of a 737 the other night. So probably a little bit bigger than a 737, you know, and it's just right there and nobody's slowing down. Nobody's hitting their brakes. And it's been there for a minute because I saw it from three or four miles north of there. And uh, as I drove under this thing, I slowed way down and uh, I kept thinking, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. I felt like I was being warded off. Now I think I, I act as kind of crazy and foo-foo as it sounds. I think it was like a telepathic, some kind of message I was getting like, don't stop. And I slowed way down and looked up. And when I got under it, those headlights were not in my eyes. And there was kind of, kind of an orangish red light that was pulsating on the bottom, just like blip, blip, blip. And it was uh, it was a just an equilateral triangle. It was utterly silent. And the bottom had kind of a ribbing. It was kind of striated. And it just looked, it looked like something out of, you know, Star Wars or a sci-fi movie. And scared the living daylights out of me. I floored the car, went about a thousand yards, hit the brakes, looked back, uh, you know, kind of, did I just see what I thought I saw? And that orangish red light was lighting up the tops of the trees. And then I just floored the car and uh, proceeded. I uh, drove all the way to Owen Road and Fenton and got off the freeway, ran into a gas station and I was, Oh, there's this thing out above the freeway. There's this is huge triangle. It's almost on the ground, blah, blah. And these people are looking at me like I'm crazy, you know. Tried to call my then wife, and that's what happened. And then, well, there's a lot more that, that I've talked about with you and Michelle. It happened subsequently, but I don't know how yeah. deeply you want to get in. But that was, that was the, I think, one of the odd features of this thing, and I think this is important to hit on, is that, uh, you know, I thought, I mean, here, here's this large what looks like a spaceship or something, you know, just south of Flint, Michigan, a congested metropolitan area. And I thought, well, this is going to be on the local news at six and 11, and maybe the national news. Uh, it was crickets. I got home and uh, watched the news, nothing on the 6 PM news, nothing on the 11 PM news, ran up and bought a newspaper the next day, nothing in the newspaper. So I've been kind of on a quest or in, and it, it's relevant, particularly in this podcast, in this episode, because I, I kind of went on this quest to find people that had seen this thing. I was driving to it. It was a temp job that I had down in New Hudson. And uh, I quit like two weeks later. I lost track of the people. Some people where I worked had seen it. It didn't seem like as many. It, it didn't seem like as many people had seen it who should have. But some of us had seen it. And we were all kind of semi-hysterical. and. Uh, 
I've always wanted to find people that had seen it, and I made some YouTube videos, YouTube videos, starting about five years ago. I, I went to a therapist after I had a heart attack, and, when, and I ended up talking about this mostly. I still see the guy, just, uh, and he kind of encouraged me. I kicked around the idea of making these YouTube videos, and I finally did it. And one of the main reasons was I wanted to find, you know, somebody else who'd seen this because I thought. And it's worth noting, too, I want to say this. This is really crazy. Uh, skipping a, a lot of the details that we went over in episode four. In 2009, I was getting a blood test. And I used to be really, really, I would just get totally freaked during blood tests. Nurses taking my blood. There's a lady at a desk with a spacey wallpaper. I just, I, I had to think of, I had to, back then I had to think about anything besides getting my blood drawn. And I'd just written an article about this experience for a website. And I say to this lady at the desk, I said, hey, you, you should go to this website, uh, Classic UFO, and read this article. I, in 1994, I saw this uh, huge triangle out of, between Baldwin and Thompson Roads. And, uh, and she turns to me and she says, my neighbor saw that. He's a lawyer and she teaches at Mott. And, this is, and, and I don't recall her giving me a date, but I got the distinct impression that it had been fairly recent. And I'd seen this in 94. 2010, I'm at a class reunion. I bump into an old, an old friend of mine who absolutely does not use the internet. We'd been friends since kindergarten. He played drums in a band I was in, in high school. I'd lost track of him. We start shooting the bull. He's having a beer. I'm having a Coke, talking about old times, marriages, divorces, bringing, you know, getting up to bringing, just kind of going over old times. And I said, Hey, and I thought to tell Jack, I said, Hey man, in 94, I was driving out on us 23 and I saw this huge UFO almost on the ground. And he says, he looks at me and he says, I saw that. I saw that too. And he tells me this crazy story and he tells me he knows it was 1995. And I'm like 1995. Okay. The lady the year before has got these friends that have seen it. She's kind of indicated it had been recent. So, you know, 2005 or nine or something. He's telling me he saw it in 95. And then I do some podcasts recently and I, a couple of people reach out to me, a uh, young man by the name of Alex and a fellow by the name of Ed. And uh, Alex saw the same object, had almost the identical experience that I had at the same exact spot on March 23rd of 2019. I mean, how insane is this? What, what's, is this a portal? Is this, what does it say about this phenomenon and time? I mean, I've got four people now. I mean, including myself, that's, that's, I know with certainty of, of let's see, what would it be of myself and at least two other people that have seen it, but have seen it at other times. And I believe the lady that was in the office where they took my blood was suggesting that her friends had seen it recently. So really I know of three people who've seen this object. Well, Ed did not see it at the same place. He saw it. The whole thing is so crazy. Ed saw it on the same day I saw it, but he saw it in Emily city an hour before I saw it. And that's not even as weird as that gets. I mean, the whole thing is just bizarre, but that's kind of, the recap, and uh, I explained to you my reaction to it. I was, I, you know, I've gotten emotional about it at times, and uh, I'll let Alex speak for himself, but he said that, you know, when he heard the podcast, he got kind of emotional. Yeah. I think it's because, and I, I've decided, I think it's because both of us, I mean, I suspect this. I don't know anything. It's like I, I learned my head is empty. I think we had more than a sighting. I think we had more on the order of an experience because I'll let, again, him speak for himself, but I think, I know I felt I was warded off from it. I kept thinking, I'm not supposed to, I kept hearing, you're not supposed to be here. Or you're not supposed to be. But uh, at any rate, uh, I think that's why it affected me so profoundly. And I've just come to that in the last couple of months after talking to Alex, I think, I think we experienced a form of communication with this thing that humans don't normally experience. And uh, I had suspected it for years. I feel that, that that's true more strongly now after I talked to Alex. And you might want to jump to Alex and, 
And, and you know that my experience too, I had a couple of coworkers that showed up an hour late for work and swear that they were, you know, that their van spun up. They didn't see anything in the sky, but their van started spinning. They blacked out. They woke up on a table and it's crazy. It's absolutely yeah. totally crazy, but okay. That's well, kind of a recap. And, and if anybody wants to hear all of guys story from that episode, that's episode four the triangles playground. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. If you're curious, I think we ended up talking for close to two hours. That I want to say about two hours. Yeah. So, okay. So let's jump over to Alex. So Alex, why don't you give us a little bit of background and share a little bit of what happened because this is extremely synchronistic, I guess you could say um, how, how we have all kind of, came together at this point which is really just really bizarre so all right alex i'm going to turn it over to you yeah so uh yeah my name is alex i'm uh i'm an insurance agent over on the west side of michigan here um i've been in insurance for uh since about 2018 i got my license been in and out of a few different companies i work for state farm uh health insurance company a few other companies uh so yeah, so this happened uh, in 2018. Before this happened, I, I mean, I was into UFOs just like anybody else, I guess. Like watching, you know, Independence Day, thinking it's cool. Just you know, thinking about yeah, the pop culture stuff that was out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, no, so I, I just want to. Like, I want to interrupt Alex for a minute. I apologize. I thought he had said it was 2019. I'm sorry. So. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just talking about 2018. It was 2019 when this happened. Okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, so, yeah, before I just really wasn't into UFOs, like, just like anybody else, I'd say, um, average. And, uh, yeah, so this night I, um, I was in between jobs. I was living with my parents in Fenton. And, uh, my brother, he got a, uh, he had an OWI and, uh, so he didn't have a license. So I had to drive him to work and he worked third shift at uh, GM at the, the plant there next to Bishop. And, uh, so he would start work it depends, but between like one and 3 AM, I would drive him. And this particular night, uh, the 23rd March, I, uh, just like any other night, really. I just, I picked him up from his apartment. It was like, it was like 2.30 and we, uh, we drove up to the plant and everything's normal. There's really not a lot of traffic on 23 at that time of night, really. There's just a few cars here and there. Um, dropped him off, went through the security gate, hopped back on the highway. Um, Right where Guy said he initially saw the lights when I hopped on the highway. I didn't see the lights that soon. Um, as soon as Guy saw it, I saw it later on when I was driving. Um, if anybody's familiar with 23 going south, on the left side of 23 going south, there's a, a big uh, like landfill. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. You do a little, there's a little S curve, a little curve that goes around it where you, you, uh, head back and then you start going south again um and it was during that curve i didn't see any lights and then as soon as i got past that curve the lights were just like blinding like they're just right there but like they're miles away but they're just so bright and they're right over i could tell that they were really really low and i just i just i feel like i'm a level-headed guy and i i immediately went through my head i i started a checklist like I was like, okay, so what could this be, right? Like, is this a plane? I was looking at it for a good 10 seconds after I said, is this a plane? I didn't see any blinking lights. It wasn't moving. I understand parallax. And I know moving in a car, you can sometimes look at a plane and it looks like it doesn't move. I've seen that before. This wasn't like that. And the lights were just so bright too. I just, I mean, I know landing lights with Bishop right there, they're, there's that, but it just, it wasn't a plane. I've seen planes land before too. Um, so it wasn't a plane. I just went down the list. I'm like, okay, is it, is it a helicopter? And I was looking at it for another 10 seconds, getting closer and closer to it. 
Um, and no, I didn't think it was a helicopter because again, there's no blinking lights and I knew that they need to have a blinking light and I'm getting Especially closer and that closer close to an airport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, and as I'm getting closer and closer, I'm realizing how low it is. And I went through my head. I'm like, well, is there, I know that there's no towers right there. There's no cell phone towers and even cell phone towers blink. I'm like, this hasn't blinked a red light. I don't see red light or green lights or anything like that. And just getting up close to it is just, I could tell it's getting bigger and bigger. And I, um, I actually got a video of it. I, um, it's not a good video. And I mean, it's really not even worth showing to anybody unless they really know the area really well and know that there's nothing over on the right side of the highway that makes those kinds of lights. Yeah. Um, but I slow, I started slowing down. I slowed down a lot. Like, I mean, I was going 25 when I looked at my speedometer getting up close to it. And I, I, uh, so yeah, my last thought to going down that list was I'm like, could this be a drone? And I, same thought, I'm like, this is either the biggest drone I've ever seen. And then even if this was a drone, it would have to have lights to be like, to be compliant in my head. Like that's what I was thinking. And, and it, it got real crazy when, uh, when I got up close to it, cause at that point I rolled down my passenger side window just because I didn't want any glare or anything from the lights. I wanted to actually really get a good look at it. And uh, like Guy said, I mean, this thing was literally, I mean, it was touching the trees practically. I mean, like, I mean, I've told Guy, I mean, like, I played baseball when I was younger. I mean, I haven't played in high school or anything like that. But, like, I, I bet money I could hit it with a rock if I threw it hard enough. I mean, it was 200 feet up in the air. Like, if I had the right, like, I mean, I could hit it. It's, it was so close and yeah, but when I got up underneath it, I could tell that it was, it was a triangle. I mean, the three recess lights on each side and clear as day. I mean, I was literally only 150 feet away from it and uh, right in the middle, like Guy said too, there's, this is what really freaked me out. I mean, the light, I mean, everything was scary, but like, and I was right next to it is when I was able to see the red light that was underneath it. And that, that was huge. It was way bigger than the other lights. And it was like, at that point too, the other lights weren't illuminating the craft at all. But the, when I looked at the red light, the red light actually illuminated the craft. And that's when I actually was able to like see the, the blackness of it, the grayish blackness. And I actually kind of forgot about this, but when I was talking to Guy and he was telling me about what, remember when what he saw, he said that like he saw like it looked like grates on the bottom of it, like yes, weird like like a weird pattern and like that like a just, texture. Like, yeah, and that hit me immediately because like I remember a texture. It was a texture, and I remember it just being like my first thing I just thought of is just like this is alien as hell. This is the the craziest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like. And like Guy said, the craziest part about it is like you just in my head, I kept on like I always go back in my head and thinking like, why didn't I stop? You know, because I could have stopped right next to it. I could have got probably the best video of a UFO probably ever. Um, but I didn't because really in my head, it like it felt like it kept on telling me just like, don't stop. You're not supposed to be here. Kept on going keep on going keep on going and that's the weird thing too is like that night i mean i don't i don't think i lost any time and i don't because i uh after i drove past it whatever i just drove right home i don't remember seeing any other cars that night which isn't the craziest thing at 3 a.m on 23 i mean i could drive all the way through fenton even fenton's completely dead at that time and get all the way home without seeing anybody um but when i got home i was like I couldn't talk to my parents. They're both sleeping. Right. Um, figured I'd call my brother cause he's the only person up cause I just dropped him off for work and he, I knew he'd be able to take the call and, and told him about it. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, and ever since, I mean, I like, I just remember just 
immediately, even that night, I was looking up other stories. I'm like, there has to be somebody else that has seen this, not necessarily even Michigan or just anywhere. I was just looking for any story at all that would resemble anything that I saw. And, uh, yeah, so whatever, a few years go by and, um, I'm, I'm into UFOs now, like really hard at that point. Cause that just, I mean, that opened my mind. I mean, I was, I was religious. I mean, growing up, I mean, it's kind of forced to go to church, but I didn't hate it or anything. I mean, I definitely had faith. I still have faith. Um, but, uh, it definitely made me open my mind up a lot because, I knew that there has to be something crazy, crazy going on. That's where my wife and I started our group in 2018 because I needed to know what the hell it was that we saw. It, it was insane. We'll get more into that later. But one question I have for you before we jump to Ed, because uh, Ed actually had one of his stories featured on one of our podcasts. And, uh, it's just very, very odd that at this point in time that all of all five of us that have seen what I think is the same craft or at least the same type of craft at different times. But uh, Alex, what was the date again on your sighting and experience? Yeah, let me uh, yeah, I'll circle over that. Like I was just uh, saying, like when I so I was searching for people that had similar experiences and uh that's when I came across, it was just some Sunday morning. I mean, this was like three months ago, I'd say, I don't know. I, I had to check with the guy on that. Um, but I, it was just a Sunday morning and I was bored and I, uh, I was like, oh, I want to listen to some kind of podcast about UFOs. I just typed it on Safari, like Michigan triangle UFO podcast or something like that. Super <laughs> simple. Right. And ours was and, first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, your podcast popped up and I was like, okay. And then, I saw episode four and I was like, okay, I'll listen to this. And I just, it was, it was crazy. Like I said, it was Sunday morning, my girlfriend was still sleeping and I was laying in bed to listen to it and uh, with my headphones on. And I just, I started crying. Like when I was listening to guy, cause like, I just, it was just so crazy to me that not only did he see exactly the same exact thing that I saw, but the same exact location that many years before. And, and you uh, had somebody validating your sighting. Yeah. From yeah. And that was, like, that was complete validation too. Yep. So that, that really changed a lot for me. That was like, I knew yeah. immediately that I would have to talk to him and get in contact with him. Luckily I was able to find him on his YouTube channel. Yep. But, um, um, what was your question again? Sorry. I was looking back. I, I was just it. looking for what was the date? Oh, the date. So it was yeah. March 23rd, 2019. That's correct. Jesus. I know. Uh, uh, and is... when, and when, when guy told me that once I put piece that together too, that it was only just a few days off. And then however many years later, uh, I weirded me out. Yeah. Cause our sighting was March 9th, 2018. Same, same craft. Same or same type of craft, same type of craft early in the morning. Yeah, and it was uh, it was two thirty. It was two thirty. It was at the intersection of two seventy five and Ford Road, hovering right above Ford Road, basically above the IKEA, and it was close to three hundred feet per side. Recessed lights. Uh, the lights were were not admit emitting photons yet they glowed and it looked like it was absorbing any light coming from the street lights because it was that close that the the skin was almost shimmering and absorbing the light but you could see the outline of the craft and then michelle being in the passenger side as we turned on 275 we did the michigan u-turn to go south on 275 the thing rotated in place and started to parallel move along with us along 275 and michelle was able to see the lights in the back well and red lights you know alex like you said with you know not thinking to grab your phone and start to take a video yeah. you know it was the same thing you're so awestruck by what you're seeing the 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 sense that that trigger action to go I need to grab my phone. 
Yeah. I went through the checklist. If you listen to any of our podcasts and I described this, it's like, I did exactly that because I have an aviation background. I have a military background and I went through the checklist. Those are not landing lights. I see no navigation lights. I see no wings. Uh, is this? Oh, and that was this... another thing I was looking when I went across like the helicopter on my list, I was thinking of like rotor wash. I'm like, if it's a helicopter sure. or even a drone, a drone that big, like the trees would be just be absolutely moving. flying. I knew yes. that. Like I just knew that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so just how I, things work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it broke every rule of science that I know being a science teacher, that something that big, unless it was a lighter than aircraft in some way could you know, function the way that it did, but then it disappeared after we went down a sound embankment along the, the expressway, we popped up. I'm expecting to see it off next to Michelle along the expressway at treetop level. And it was gone and things just, you know, things, even a, a aircraft, you know, you would see the, the lights fading away or whatever. There was none of that. It was just gone. And that was another thing I forgot to even mention, um, sound. I, the reason why I rolled down the window other than the glare was to listen. Um, I didn't, to, you know, and cause I mean, you didn't, oh, you would hear a helicopter. I mean, you can hear right. that from a, whole, a little while away. Yep. They're loud. Um, yeah. There's nothing. It was nothing. Man. Not a hum or even anything. Like I didn't hear anything. Okay. Except for so, my car tire. Wow. We're going to, we're going to get into how everybody kind of came together at this point and how we all started talking, but let's go ahead and jump to Ed. Ed, why don't you uh, kind of fill everybody in on uh, your story? And, you know, we did feature one of your stories or your story a little bit, but I think it would be really good for people to hear it from your experience. Hello, everybody. I'm Ed. I live in Port here in Michigan. And my sighting was back yet be the morning of the 18th of March, 1994. It was the same time guy seen his, except I seen mine maybe hour, hour and a half earlier than he had done seen his. I would stay at my parents at the time. It was hot as heck there. And I needed gas for in the morning, so I decided to head to K-Pack, Michigan to get some gasoline. And I was heading south on like Back Road. And it's no man's land. I don't know if you guys have ever been out there. There's absolutely like no lights or anything out there. And I noticed that before my from it'd be like the northeast, a weird colored like white light. And I held a valid uh, airline transport pilot license at the time. And it struck me as strange as the color, you know. I kind of kept my eye on it in the mirror. And when you fly or flew, you know how your crab, when your crosswind landed, it kind of moved like, it kind of moved like that, you know, behind my car because it was coming from the north. And I looked ahead a little bit and all of a sudden it was like there above my car going over at an angle towards the uh, It'd be the southwest towards like Emily City, the Pier and Flint area. It it was huge, like you said, it was like 200 by 200 by 200 feet. And it had the three recessed lights that, you know, they didn't shine down on the road or nothing. And uh, it, was, it moved off the angle. Like, and like Michelle said, I seen the back lights that had like five red lights on it. And it was just like a no noise, just cruising. I mean, what the heck is it? You know, <laughs> it was kind of stepped on it. And it was going at the, the southwest angle, you know, across fields when I and I watched it. So it was kind of small, and then it was like on Star Trek when it, you know, in the Enterprise, it, it just like blinks. It was like blink, it was gone. So I kept heading for the Cape back. I don't know. A couple miles, few miles later, that's when the F-16s blew by with the afterburners on. So then uh, I got back home and, you know, the radio, the news, nothing. And I, I just, like I said, you guys, just one of the things, you know, they say it, it was a weather balloon or whatever, but, you know, it's like, I know what I saw. 
But it was weird. It was just like an hour or two before he's seen his. Yeah. Now, KPEC is by uh, Selfridge Air National Guard Base, correct? That's probably about 45 minutes north of there. It's I-69. Because I grew up in Mount Clemens, so I grew up in the shadow of of, right, yeah. uh, Selfridge and seeing back in the day it was F4s and A7s and then I ended up moving out of the area when they ended up getting the F16s and uh, so you saw the F16s they looked like they were in pursuit of this thing yeah they had the afterburns going Wow! <laughs> I said I was, in a, I was in Desert Storm <laughs> I, was, I was on an airfield and I was in Aviation, and I knew what those were. <laughs> exactly. They shake your guts and they blow over you. <laughs> yeah, so you you have a lot of experience with aviation, and, and what you saw was not like a B-2 or anything like that. Oh, no, not at all. And then it was like two stories tall on top of it. <laughs> yeah. It's just massive, massive. And so that's what, how a guy said it, though. Lights on the corners and how you say it. how they, you know, any other aircraft, you got beams shining down the road or lighting up the roadway. And it, was, it was just like lights that were there. <laughs> yeah, because landing lights on aircraft shine down and forward at an angle so they can illuminate the runway as they're getting close to touching down. These things were straight down. They serve no purpose. Uh, they're like recessed up in the corners. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Insane. Like the corners were just emitting light. <laughs> and what what time would you say that it was when you uh, saw this thing? I'd be around four o'clock in the morning. Okay. And it's funny, this guy and I were talking, and the night four was uh, St. Patty's Day. And I was at a bar in Emily City where he had hadn't been, and I didn't even know he was there. <laughs> so that's that's one of the – this is one of those weird – crazy excuse my language crazy ass things that this is start this is one of the this is one of the strangest uh just to put a finer point on this yeah i mean i've never spent any time in emily city i lived in flint which is like 37 miles away i was playing with a little band i met ed like a week ago and he was trying to nail down the exact date and he finally did and he told me how he did it was he remembered that he'd been at this bar called the Night Owl Lounge in Emily City on the 17th, you know, the, you know, right before he saw this on the morning of the 18th. And I said, dude, I was playing with a band in that bar and I can prove it. I said, that's where I was. I was playing with the Cruisers band at the Night, Night Owl Lounge on the 17th when you were there. So we were in the same room together. This is nuts. That's crazy. I mean... How, excuse me, how freaking insane. When he told me that, I almost fell out of my chair and I didn't mean to jump in. Ed. I'm sorry, but I just, I mean, that's, that's, that's off the charts, man. That's where I was. We were in the same nightclub. And a few hours later, we're both, uh, he's seeing it in Emily City and 40 miles away, an hour later, I'm seeing it. This is weird. And, and the fact that he can clarify that. <laughs> It was heading in your direction at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Well, my question is where, where were those jets when I saw right. it? Man, this thing was sitting there not being bothered by jets or anything at all. So that's a curiosity. If they lost it, they didn't know where to go. They just probably called it off, but it's just this, this is those things that, that boggles my mind that gets me to this whole notion of, Okay. You guys were in the same place at the same time, saw the same craft, did not know each other in totally different parts of the state, even, you know, 45 miles away, whatever, but still, and, and now here we are, and all of us have seen the same type of craft. And it's just mind boggling because I had never thought about starting a podcast about this stuff. I only started it with my wife because we started to see the stories coming in 
on this little private group to see if anybody around that area of Ford Road and 275 saw this thing. And th- and people started sending us their stories. And after a year and a half of seeing these things coming in from people and people joining, I was like, maybe we should just start something and talk about it. The next thing I know is that we got guy coming on. We tell our story in episode zero. And, and now the things are increasing that we're getting more and more information. What do I hear next? There's going to be a UFO report released. Like what is going on and why did, why did us five see this? It, 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 and nobody else, by the way, now Ford road in Canton at two 30 in the morning still has cars. Okay. It's not dead, but it's not crazy either. It's not packed. Nobody else was reacting at all. I was, I was gunning it and getting up and around that, uh, that uh, Michigan U-turn to get onto the expressway and just wanted to get the hell out of there because I couldn't identify it. And it was, it was tripping all the, the wrong signs for me. And it was like, get the hell out of Dodge. And uh, it, it, it's just crazy. And now, you know, Ed, Alex, you contact guy and everything just seems to be meshing together. And, and I, I'm the type of person being a scientist and a science teacher. It's like, okay, I can't get direct answers, but what the hell is going on? What, what is this about and and why us? I think it's time for a quick break. So let's hear from our sponsor. I don't know if anybody wants to chime in on anything. And Ed, I think you still have some part of your story that you want to uh, continue. So Ed, please jump back in. I still remember that night. Uh, I, how I remembered it was that I was in that bar and I said, guy said he was. And I said, I remember the band said they're taking requests. And I'd asked him if they could play Wipeout. And the guy told me, we don't know the words. And I said, that was probably you, you smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Probably the drummer. <laughs> but that was like how I, you know, I remembered the date exactly when it was. But as I said, it's just so strange. It was like, what, an hour, hour and a half before he's seen a thing hovering above the expressway. And you're an hour and a half before I see it. I mean, you're asking our band for a request. I never go to MLA City. And then years later, here we are on this podcast. We both saw the same thing. It's just nuts, man. <laughs> this is all them weird little synchronicities. <laughs> and I said, like, it, how it really it. is. The movement of it. Like, when you said it, it rotated like that, that's when I noticed. Out of the corner of my eye, how it was moving, it was like when an aircraft's landing crosswind and you crapped the aircraft. It's like kind of how it was yeah. moving until it come up behind me. <laughs> now, did you, Ed, did you experience any type of communication or anything? Like Guy was talking about the, the possible telepathy of, you know, you're not supposed to be here. Did no, anything I, like that occur? Nothing like that. Okay. I seen it. Like, yeah, because wow. we didn't we didn't have that either. No, yeah. I was just like, just made me wonder what was it. <laughs> Alex, yeah, no, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I think maybe possibly just because of the maybe proximity between me and guys sighting. I mean, we were right. I mean, we were right there. I was like, gonna I say mean, I was not to, not to jump on you, but I was gonna thinking the same thing. We were so so damn close to that thing. I mean, it's as, it's literally as close as you can be. I mean, there's, I mean, there, there's no other way to put it, really. I mean, there, it was scary close. Yeah, and and I want to say that we were probably, God, the damn, the thing was so so large, that it's really hard to judge distance. Um, yeah, for sure. We were, and we were. To probably, be honest, I go ahead. Sorry, like even like maybe my memory, like I mean, I want to say it's like the same as like uh, I don't think I'm as good at judging sizes as either guy or even Ed or even you. I don't know. I, I mean, it was at least a hundred foot. I mean, it, at least like I mean, it was like I said, it's the biggest thing that I've seen. Like, is way bigger than any helicopter. Oh yeah, yeah. 
and I saw we saw no moving parts, no, no nothing. I mean, I mean, I in less than quarter of a mile from it, too. I mean, it yeah. was just right there. Maybe, maybe, maybe an eighth of a mile. If I mean, that. if that, because I, I don't know. I think it was moving toward the expressway really slow as we were approaching. You know, you got to go underneath the expressway to get on the ramp to then do that U turn there to get on southbound. And I thought it was moving kind of along the road following Ford Road and then just rotate it. It did not bank. It was not using any kind of aerodynamics or anything like that. It was, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was doing. Anti-gravity, I have no clue. And that's another thing. I mean, with me, I mean, I've looked, looked everything up, it seems like, on Google at this point. There's, there's definitely a lot of similar, not only just similar sightings, but, like, I mean, pictures and also, like, I don't know if you guys have seen, like, the patent. Have you guys seen that? Oh, the, uh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly and the I don't, same. I don't want to go out there and say that that's been debunked or whatever, because when I saw that, I was like, that is, that is almost exactly what we saw. Now it wasn't moving like the videos that people say that the videos are of those things. Yeah, And I don't even want to say either any of the pictures are real or even the videos, but yeah. Just, just the way the pictures look and even like, I mean, everything is just super similar. I mean, it's like some of these pictures look exactly like the same thing. Like, yeah, that's what I'm trying. To yeah. And I do. I mean, I did take the video. I mean, when I was, when I was driving, I mean, like I said, it's not a video that's really noteworthy I'd say, but I mean, you can see the lights and you can see three of them and they're bright. And yeah, I mean, if you know 23, you know that they're not supposed to be there. I could send you that right. if you want. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, we look at everything and anything that we can. <laughs> and sometimes it gets a little crazy. <laughs> I mean, our hopes are that we still have someone the same night that we saw what we did in Canton, Michigan, that just by chance, one other person driving by here's our story and says, you know what, I'm going to reach out to him. So, because it, it's almost like verification and validation yeah. of what we saw, because we came home, we talked about it. Wayne contacted MUFON. I did. Yes. We talked about it for a couple of weeks. And then it was like, we didn't talk, talk about it much after that, because still trying to process yeah. even within our own house, what we saw. And I feel like that's a problem too, because it's like, and I was so happy I found Guy because, like, I mean, me and Guy, we talked on the phone for a few hours when I first contacted him. It's just, this is the first time I was ever really able to, like, talk about it openly. I mean, I've told my girlfriend, told all my friends even, like, close to me, like, about it. But they don't, I mean, they hear the story and they're just like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But they don't have any, they don't know. They don't have the experience. Yeah, they don't know. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If there's nothing to reference off of. You know, I remember too, even talking with a couple of coworkers after, you know, we saw what we did and it's kind of like that raised eyebrow. And it's like, no, the, your, your teacher has not gone completely <laughs> bat crazy. The, this is something that we saw. Yeah. I, I don't think there, there's a disconnect. I mean, I've tried to explain to my wife and my wife is really supportive and, uh, you know, we grew up together. She lived next door. It's crazy how we found each other, but finally got married years later. But, but anyway, she's su supportive, but I've said to her many times, it's, you can, I can talk about it with somebody, even her. And she believes me totally because she knows me. She's known me since I was we've known each other since we were eight or nine, but she knows I don't, you know, tell stories, but she knows that it happened. But I've said to her many times that, uh, something changes in you when you really are confronted with this, that, that you cannot fully appreciate, even if you're open-minded and you believe somebody have, you have to kind of have this experience. And I'm not trying to be, right. I'm not trying to become a member of some exclusive club and say, you know, 
I'm so special or anything like that at all. I just mean, it's one thing to, to listen to somebody talk about it. And it's another thing to have that experience. And I, I was really, I gave Alex a lot of credit because, you know, we're guys, we're not supposed to cry. Right. You know, I remember my dad yelling at me one time when I cried when my dog died, you know, said, what are you crying about? You know, he'd been in world war two and seen a lot of death. And, you know, I just, we're not, we're supposed to be tough guys. And, but, you know, I've gotten, you know, Wayne, uh, the first time we did a podcast, I got a little bit uh, choked up at one point. I had a hard time with it at one point. And, yeah, uh, we took a little break. We had to take a little break there. And uh, it's uh, it, because these these experiences affect people differently. Um, I, I did not have that same like sense of dread other than get the hell out of Dodge. Well, just get away. Well, I think what Alex but, said, what Alex said is, is key. We were so, so close to this thing. I mean, I was wondering, is it going to take me? You know, I don't know about yeah. Alex, but. All right, Ed, did you want to jump in? I was saying it's weird. How everybody all come together. It was like the same thing. And we all seen like the same thing. But none of us really very close to what is it? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I remember. I, I told my mother about it the next morning. You know, she's alive back then, and her, you know how back then it was kind of crazy. She told me what she said: "You're nuts, just like your father. Why don't you have him take him, <laughs> into him take you out to the garage and show you how to make a tinfoil hat?" Oh no! Well, here's the thing about making a tinfoil hat: if you are receiving any kind of signals, it acts like an antenna. So don't <laughs> use tin. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <conductor. laughs> You know, remember back in the days where, you know, if you had the old rabbit ear TVs, one of the things you always did was wrap aluminum foil. The bow ties. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So don't do that or you make things work. (laughs) So, but yeah, this is this is crazy. The synchronicity of everything and the fact that Guy and Alex saw this thing in the exact same spot just at different times. Now, guy, we were chatting a little bit and you had thrown out some ideas and some things that have happened to you since you were on our podcast, along with like meeting Alex and Ed and us getting contacted by Ed and Ed. I think I said, you know what? Talk to guy. Yes, you did. You know, look him up on. Yeah. Look him up on the group and send him a message because uh, this is getting weird, and I think you guys need to talk. Oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, guy, what what has been going on, man? Well, just, I mean, you know, I don't want to do a rehash of the previous podcast. After, right? you know, after this happened, I thought, you know, my, my story is really bizarre. And I mean, I don't know who would believe it. You know, I had two ladies where I worked, but I only had one person in that factory that I knew on a first name basis. And, uh, they showed up an hour late for work. I didn't see her that Friday. And I, on Monday, she wanted me to call her and I called her and she said, you know, like I've told you guy, she said on, on, on Friday, she must've overheard me and some other people in the, in the lunchroom. She said, when, when everybody was talking about seeing a UFO, me and Felicia, we didn't see anything in the sky, but, but my van started spinning around and, then it was spinning faster and faster. And fa- basically she recalled her van being sucked up into the sky. I mean, who's going to believe this man? Nobody. And then she blacked out. And then over that week, we talked some more on the phone and she had these fragmented memories of being on a table and having this being looking at her. I mean, you know, this sounds like something out of the national Enquirer or, or worse. Right. Know, nobody's going to believe this, but, and that, and I was told a similar story. I called MUFON too. And a MUFON lady came to my house, took a report and said that two ladies carpooling to Lucas Surtec in Fenton six hours earlier at like 10, 1030 at night at the same spot, drove their car right underneath this thing. It was straddling both lanes of the freeway at the same spot, but right over the freeway. And that they had been going south. And suddenly they woke kind of came to consciousness and realized they were going north. And this is before they'd seen it and thought, how in the heck did we end up going north? They turned around and on their second pass going south, they drove their car right underneath this thing. 
And their perception was that it had taken them like five minutes to turn around. They got to work and they were an hour late. So, I mean, with two sets of women that didn't know each other. But anyway, my thing was, well, you know, I'm, I'm just to be honest, I mean, I, I just, and this was hard. I mean, I had a lot to process in a four day period. I mean, I had to yeah. accept that I'd seen this thing that looked like, frankly, a spaceship that maybe abductions were real. Felicia, the gal in the passenger seat at work, told my then wife who got a job at the factory again, the synchronicity and worked with her on a line on Tuesday. Felicia told my wife that she didn't know why, but she thought these guys had, that they'd been abducted and she thought these guys had made her pregnant. At which point I told my wife, I didn't want to hear any more about this. And then years later, I find an article on or a, a submission to MUFON on their website written by Felicia. And nine months later, she had a kid. Um, Jesus. You know, I mean, you know, it's nuts. It's this is stuff. This is straight out of some goofy sci-fi movie. But, you know, I have to live with this. I mean, this is what happened. But but my feeling was, well, they took Carolyn and Felicia, but this has nothing to do with me. And I want to forget about it as much as I can. And I kind of shoved it down. I just kind of tried to put it out of my life. One thing, though, that that I never mentioned on the first podcast was right after this happened, I. I became obsessed with the idea that we didn't understand time properly and more so than the UFO thing. I was, I was drawing pictures of, on paper and showing them to people and drawing a line and saying, we think of a line, we think of time like this in a linear way and there's entropy and we're born and we die and the sun goes up and the sun goes down, but it's not like that. And I was drawing a circle and saying, I think everything's happening at the same time within this cir- circle. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, physics for dummies. I don't know. I've never had an introductory physics class. I didn't know what I was talking about, but I was obsessed with this idea that we didn't understand time. And I didn't know why I was doing this, you know, and, uh, and I've wondered subsequently, I've had it suggested to me when I've told some people recently about meeting Alex and Ed, you know, that maybe this thing, I mean, this sounds insane, man, but maybe it's out there quote all the time unquote. And, or, I mean, and that sounds daffy and, but, but I mean, I just, I just don't think we understand. Well, quantum physics is a, in quantum mathematics, quantum mechanics, pardon me, in quantum physics era kind of suggests these sorts of things, uh, you know, are possible. And from what I've read, you know, I, I checked out a book on, physics from the library and i'll be honest i couldn't understand it on quantum physics and i couldn't understand any of it it's way beyond me i flunked algebra basically got d's and <laughs> i just couldn't really figure it out but i don't know what's going on that so many people have seen this now now ed saw it out in you know out by emily city but like i said i now know of four people who have seen this at the same spot on in different years. I mean, what is going on here? I mean, and, you know, besides the time thing, just, you know, I think we went over it in the first podcast. It's a lot of bizarro. I did have a strange experience. Uh, I told you about, I think the first podcast, you know, my wife and I were sitting in our den and the neighbor lady came and rang the bell. We didn't know her. She's a doctor. And she said, are you folks all right? And I said, what are you talking about? Their, Their house sits on a hill up behind ours. Her and her husband are both doctors. And she said, well, there was a big explosion right up by your sliding glass door. And I didn't know her and I didn't really get into it with her. But since you and I talked, I've gotten to meet them. Well, I got to meet them because I'd been trying to call in these UFOs and we didn't see anything. And one day the neighbor came running over to me, her husband, the husband of this lady and said, have you seen the lights behind the house? Have you seen the lights behind the house? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? I'll have to send you, I think I posted it on Facebook, but he filmed the thing that looks like the Phoenix lights behind our house. And, uh, and uh, I went up there and talked to him one evening and I talked to this lady at greater length and I didn't know. She said this explosion that she saw right up by our sliding glass door and Linda and I were sitting right here. She said, it was huge. She said, I thought your house exploded. I said, what color was it? She said it was blue and white. And it was this massive explosion. And I'm like, this is impossible, kind of. We're sitting right here. I mean, so, I mean, just a lot of weird things have happened. And, uh, I mean, I've had 
all of a sudden I've had some weird stuff with electronic devices. I mean, I got a buddy on Martha's Vineyard that I met in a group, very sober-minded guy, not a crazy guy at all. He's seen a lot of UFOs and he's had a lot of problems with electronic devices. He, well, here's an example. How, how insane is this? His name's Walt. And he sent me a text and he said, man, he said, my, uh, my television set has turned itself on the last week, like three times in the middle of the night. I have to get up and turn it off. And he's talking about odd stuff with, with electronics. So uh, me and my wife were going to, to a restaurant. It was her birthday, April 23rd, this past April. And I'd forgotten to take a mask and we were meeting some folks. And I, she said, well, stop at Rite Aid and I'll run in and get you a mask. So she was in Rite Aid and I was responding to Walt about this weirdness with his electronics, right? I'm, I'm sitting in the car and I've talked to you also about seeing these, these repeating digits on clocks that happened after the blue light was around my house in 2012. If somebody wants to know about the blue light thing, they have to listen to episode four. That's a long story. But anyway, I'm sitting in the car. I'm responding to Walt about his TV set. I look at, the, I'm thinking we're going to be late for dinner. What time is it? She's in Rite Aid. I look at the digital clock. On the dashboard, it's 444. I look back at my phone. I've done this voice to text thing about 14 lines to Walt. I look at the clock. I look at my phone and suddenly it starts deleting all the text. What's sparkling and kind of popping, deleting from the bottom up and then going forward, then going back. And then it deletes all 14 lines of text and leaves like the first word. And I, me and him, I even called Apple to see if there's some function key that does that. They didn't know what I was talking about. They said if it did it again to call their engineering department. And now it's done it about six times, but only when I caught, when I try to text Walt. And I'm like, we, I teased him. I said, dude, I said, if this was a 1600s, they'd, 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 they'd burn us at the stake. I said, it's like, there's something going on here. When I try to text you, my phone electronically goes totally crazy. And Linda saw it one time I was doing it. I was sitting here trying to text him and she was sitting at this long desk we've got and I was texting Walt and I said, look at this. And she said, why is it doing that? And I said, I don't know. She said, that's wild. And, and it was like popping. And, and a couple of times it filled the text back in, but, and the, the, the little, you know, how on a, an iPhone, there's a, a wave form at the bottom. If you do voice to text, the wave yeah. form yeah. was just going nuts. It was, it was like, all distorted and going crazy. And I'm like, and he's had a lot of this stuff go on in his life with, with electronics. So, I mean, this stuff is so out there and so crazy and you're so I'm thank God I met you and Michelle and Alex and Ed. And I mean it sincerely, I thank God for it because, you know, this stuff is so damned weird. And I was not into Man, I was a musician and I'd worked with a, with a magician out in Las Vegas for a couple of weeks. It did a phony mind reading act and he showed me how he did it. And because he, he liked me and he was a good musician and I was a musician and we were buddies and it was all fake. And I, I mean, I was a skeptic, man. I was a big time skeptic. Sure. You know, and then just all this stuff has happened. And I, and, and I think there's a part of all of us that kind of goes, why me? You know, I mean. Right. And that's kind of was my point about getting this podcast and having everybody able to come on. Usually, you know, you're playing a song and dance for a few days with people to get uh, things nailed down as to dates and times and all of this stuff. But this just all felt like it was supposed to happen, like everybody having their experience, finding the podcast, talking, hearing an episode at a certain time, like Alex did having his reaction to it, then getting involved Ed, you having the same exact experience, just somewhere else on the same day and year that guy had. And we, so and we were in the same bar. I was playing music and he was going to the bandstand to request a song. And I live nowhere near Emily city. The night before, and, and, and the name the name of the the bar that you guys were both at at the same time 
being uh, the night owl. Yeah. The, think about and that. The, the night the, owl. The night owl. Right. Exactly. The owl. The cre- The creature that lives in the in the dark with the big eyes and known for its wisdom. What the hell? You know. It, it, the connections are bizarre. So, Alex, I want to I want to throw the same kind of question out to you since you've made your connection with guy and you started doing your research and stuff about what happened. Have you noticed anything different? Uh, are you being led? It feel like I feel like I'm being led in a certain direction and that all these things are falling into place. It's really bizarre. I am a man of science. I don't buy into this crap, but I can't deny what I see happening in front of me. What have you had since then, Alex? I think it's strange. I mean, um, ever since like the, let's say after the experience, really nothing, nothing crazy happened to me. I don't have the experiences like that. I, um, anything like that. Um, to be honest, kind of like, just really like anybody else, almost just kind of forget about it in a way. Like you just go on with your daily lives. But like ever since listening to the podcast and then getting in contact with guy, it just made me like really, really think about it. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's crazy it's it's just made me think of like the implications really i mean whether it's alien or not i mean i've really come down to like it's either one it's either our military it's either aliens it's either this is kind of new and this is kind of like what with my research recently i mean the new kind of idea is that they're terrestrial they're just living in our oceans or something and we just don't know about them um so it's either really either military that aliens from somewhere else interdimensional there's really like in my mind there's only four options and all of them are as crazy as it lasts yeah they're all bizarre right so really no matter what it comes down to it's 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 completely you have to just completely change your way of thinking like i mean and what i think is weird with um everything coming out so like it's all like the news with the government too. Like it just seems so weird lining up, you know, um, there's no, really, there's no other time like in the last like 60 years that there's, that they've been this open about UFOs. So I think that that's weird too. That just so happens that I had my experience during, it seems like the disclosure of UFOs by the U S government. Yeah. Well, you figure as much as technology advances on their end, it also advances on our end too, as far as what is in our hands and what we're able to get pictures and videos of. But Alex, I'm like you, my, my first thought was when in the hell did the military get that? That was the that, first, that was the first thing mouth. out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. So now see it. Now see, I've never, when I saw that and, and maybe, you know, I'm not into sci-fi or anything. I never thought. I never, and I know everybody on the panel here, I don't know about Ed, but most of you had that thought. I, I looked at this and thought, I don't think this is like from here or, or, you know, like now it could be like, I, I thought that that was interesting. What Alex said, it could be, they could be terrestrial and living like under the ocean or something. But I, I just thought this isn't human. I never considered in my case, and I wasn't a sci-fi person or a UFO person, but I thought, this is not human technology. I mean, here's a question I've got. That's got here's something I've thought about a lot recently. For me personally, I feel like a lot of people that go to the, it's the U.S. military thing. I, and this is just my opinion. This doesn't mean it's, this is the way it is. This is just what I suspect. I feel like for a lot of people, that's kind of comforting to think it's the U.S. military. But, yes. but, but, but here's the thing. For me, to think that the U.S. military has got something that's this mo- this far it's advanced. It's not comforting to me at all. That, that's all. It's this far advanced. They're doing this weird stuff. I heard a guy on, I, I was, I belonged to Gaia for a while and I canceled that. I heard this guy saying that, you know, oh yeah, I was in the military and we have guys that are dwarves and gimps and they dress up to scare people and stuff. I know what Carolyn and Felicia told me and I'm like, I don't. I mean, I think they were taken aboard this thing, and I don't think these were humans dressed up. I don't think these were midgets dressed up like aliens. And that's, 
I mean, that is so far fetched. That's crazier to me and eerier. Well, that's just a cover and up. scarier. That's kooky. That's absolutely kookier to me and more unsettling to think we've got this technology and we're hiding it. We're doing this crazy stuff. For what purpose? And not only that, I have a friend, a French Canadian, brilliant woman that works. She has a very high position. She did have a very high position in the government in Canada. She's French Canadian. And we've been talking recently. And she said, you know, this whole subject is so U.S. centric, you know, like like we heard that same thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean. You're trying to tell me this is the U.S. military, what, what we're doing in them in South America and Chile and Paraguay and Belgium and in Russia. I mean, come on, this is not the U.S. military. I, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, this stuff is happening all over the world. So I for me, I'm not saying you have to you have to subscribe to my theory, but I just I don't see that as a possibility personally. Well, and I think that the reason that for some of us that our our brains do tend to go towards the U.S. military is because, you know, maybe not necessarily as finding a safe space as an explanation, but more so that we know how secretive they are and that how much of the information that they have, it's so far above our pay grade, we'll never know. Yeah, but I I agree with Guy um, that if it was U S military people would be talking. I mean, with as much as these things are being seen. And if you figure about like how many people you would need to man this type of a craft or what it, it it makes no sense. I I was going to say, and for what conceivable purpose, right? I mean, what's, what is, what is that Occam's razor? Yes. Uh, It's the law of parsimony. The the simplest answer is probably the most, Right. Why would they fly them here? Wouldn't they want to scare Chinese, Russian, you know, uh, uh, military over in the Middle East that we're in a conflict with? Wouldn't that where you'd want them to appear and freak them out? Why just send one of those over the Taliban just once? Right. Or U.S. 23. I mean, it make that to me, that's a (laughs) That seems like a cover up. Well, and speaking of, I think I heard Michelle mention the Taliban. If we, had this, <laughs> if we had this kind of technology, I mean, unless they're just. We would rule the world. Person, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. That's Thank it. You. All right, yeah. Ed, you've been you've been quiet over there and, and listening to everything. We, we got to get you to come in and and what what has gone on with you since your sighting, then finding the podcast, talking to Guy. Have you noticed anything in your life changing, uh, feeling like you're directed toward these things more? I was telling guys the same thing. I don't know what it was. I suddenly started things with license plate numbers and the clock, 233, 333, things like that. It, it never happened before. To this day, it still does. Like something with car license plates, numbers are just popping my head. <laughs> or the, I'll keep waking up at the same time. 233, 222, 444, yes. you know, strange. Yep. I get up at, I wake up every night at, at uh, 3 30 or it's 3 33 almost uh, every night. Funny, I woke up in a, in a cold sweat about a month ago in the middle of the night. I was real, real rattled and I didn't know why. I was like, man, I'm tired. Why am I waking up? And I looked at the digital clock and it was 3 33. And I went, oh boy. Yeah, so that's me on 3 33 a lot. <laughs> Now, we did an episode where I had a couple of brothers, Russ and Kyle from Brothers of the Serpent podcast. I just call them the Snake Bros, and they came on, and they uh, pointed me to a book by Jacques Volet, and I started dipping into that. And they kind of, I haven't read it all, because I'm, I'm not that great of a reader to sit down and read. I'm, I have a hard time sitting still like that. And... uh they seem to to think that, you know, and I, I want to get your guys' thought on this, that these things like appear at certain times to make things happen. So in other words, like a lot of uh, religious uh, writings in the Bible and, and sightings and stuff like that are not angels so much, but they're interpreted by the human brain as like, angels or elves or 
whatever, some type of supernatural being, but they seem to interject themselves in society at certain key points. And that's kind of why I was going to the question of, you know, have you noticed anything, you know, within your lives that seems like it, it's, it's being kind of directed. So what do you guys think about that whole idea that if we were in a different time and we saw that triangle, it wouldn't be a floating triangle. It might look like a, a chariot being pulled by horses in Roman times or, you know, a flying chariot or something along those lines. I'm just kind of curious, Ed. Ezekiel's wheel in the Bible. Yes. Right. Uh, the right. watchers, right. The, from uh, like the book of Enoch and things like right. that. And the flying chariots. Yeah, how Enoch was taken up into basically it sounds like he was taken up into a spaceship and shown the, the solar system. I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, so what do you guys think? I was just uh, thinking about because I knew that I was going to be coming on the podcast. I uh, And I don't know why I didn't even think about this. And I don't, I'm kind of I had to double check and I think I might just be kind of just I don't know. But that video I took of the UFO, I mean, my sighting happened on uh, March 23rd, 2019. Uh, I think the, I think the video that I took was at 323. Wow. I'm like, I'm going to have to double check and I'll send you a screenshot because it's still on my iPhone. But okay, yeah. Yeah. What is it with March? I don't know. And I've the, looked that the up 19- too. And yeah, the 1966 UFO flap in Dexter and Ann Arbor, March oh, was March. Wow, like two weeks in March. I just had um, Ray Shemansky on uh, talking about the the whole because he wrote books on it. Swamp gas my ass, and it, it's this March connection, and uh, all of us have yeah, seen think, this thing in thinking. March. I was just yeah. thinking, all of us, all five of us, March. I mean, what's that about? And you're telling me the the, the, the Dexter, Michigan was March too. I'm no, yes. and there's been other stories that have happened in the month of March too, where they where there's that distinct connection. That and there was something about the number seven too. So I remember something vaguely about the seven and seven. nine. Yes, you know, like like our our sighting was March. 18th 2018 and it's you know three nine two zero one eight and it's like yours was march yours was march the 18th no ours was march 9th sorry ours was march 9th 2018 right but three nine eighteen right all multiples of nine and you can add them together to get nine Right. Three times nine is twenty seven. Two plus seven is nine. One, you know, 2018, one plus eight is nine. It's an interesting observation. That's why yeah. I, yeah. He, yeah. He loves to talk numerology. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to look at it. You got to look at this stuff. And I mean, math is the basis of the universe. You know? I mean, yeah. Math is the language. That is true. And we're we're seeing numbers. I mean, it's. uh I don't, this is the thing that bothers me the most though. And it's, it's being ignorant of what is going, what is the plan? Like we got these things operating in our airspace. We have had these sightings. You guys got, you and Alex got really close to the point where you could have probably hit it with a rock and then had some type of a communication Ed saw the F-16s in pursuit when the thing zipped away. It, it's just, I, I don't know. I, it, it's, it's just mind boggling. Like, what is the purpose? What is the purpose? And now we see all of these shows, you know, Netflix just had on UFO project show and who was on there, but Terry Lovelace, who we had on this show talking about his abduction and that did not go very well for him. You know, and and I don't believe that they are. I don't think that they're very, I don't want to say good or evil, but I really don't. I think we're like an ant to them. And, and 
they could really care less. And, and to have a craft that big flying around right here by Detroit Metro airport and, you know, not run into any airliners and be seen by any airliners. I mean, it's, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't like not knowing what their deal is and why they are showing themselves to us. I guess that's, I'm very uncomfortable with I that. I don't think, I don't think you're alone in that. I mean, that's yeah. the big question is what, what, what are they? Who are they? What are their intentions? You know, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, it's really kind of creepy. I mean, it's, I, my sense of it is they seem, and you know, this doesn't mean, again, this is the, the way that it is, but they seem to me to be kind of indifferent towards us. Yes. I know that, that Carolyn and Felicia related to pretty frightening account of being on board this thing. And I know this is again, way out. Nobody else on this panel has had something like this happen and it didn't happen to me, but it was related to me and they weren't lying. I mean, Carolyn's never been the same since. And, you know, they scared the hell out of them. They didn't go. It sounds like they didn't go out of their way to do this in a way that made them feel not scared or comfortable. They, they were indifferent, you know, they yeah. just damned them. And I mean, a lot of people listen to this and probably aren't going to believe it, but you know, I've got her phone number. She won't talk about it now because her husband says she can't, she gets too upset. Yeah. She, she was a hardcore Southern Baptist who had wanted me to go to her church. I mean, she was not a UFO person. So, you know, we're being interacted with by these guys, I think. So for, again, like you said, you know, why are they here and what are they doing? And, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Is it, I don't, I don't know. man. Yeah. I think, um, Alex? yeah, I just think, I mean, if it is extraterrestrial, like alien, I mean, I think that they're doing exactly like what we would be doing if we were in their position. I mean, if we found a planet with life, that's intelligent ish. I mean, we would be, curious about their anatomy we'd be and we would only we wouldn't just take one i mean it probably takes more than one i mean they'd be curious about our anatomy and how it changes probably over time so they would continuously take us and we would do that yeah. too i think if we were probably we're like lab rats to them <laughs> yeah yeah but it does it does a good point that alex makes i mean it you know it's not like their behavior is incongruent with, you know, like humans, you know, this is what we would do. We would, if we had the technology to go out to the, among the stars and go to a planet, we'd do the same thing. If we found a species, I mean, but the end game is what, I mean, in my case, you know, this gal that was in the passenger seat of this van told my then wife, as I've already said, that she thought these guys had made her pregnant, which I thought was just even though I'd seen this thing, I was like, come on, man, just, I just don't even talk about this anymore. And then I find out nine months later, she had a kid. And uh, I mean, I mean, this is so far out there. This is, this is like, you know, the twilight zone on steroids. I mean, nobody's going to believe this, but you know, are they trying to upgrade us, uh, genetically so that we stop killing each other over money and, power and you know you know we're, we're a pretty primitive species i mean relative to what's out there i think you know, i don't i don't know i don't know anything my head is I've, i always have said that you know seeing that thing was like having my head unzipped to reveal there was absolutely nothing in there you know i don't know anything all i, all I can do is speculate and that's what that's where we're all at, which kind of stinks, you know? Yeah. Ed, uh, I see you want to chime in there. And also, I think, Ed, you need to uh, maybe speak a little bit about the articles you sent me. I was sending that articles about the Dexter sightings. Yeah. And I noticed that all the dates are March 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. Yep. Yeah. Different, different years. <laughs> then once it was from 94 and 95. I think they say, though, that they're interested in, in our souls. Apparently, they don't have them. Oh, interesting. They're, about that. Yeah, they're interested in, that they abducted people and ask them where the soul's at. A human can't answer and they get angry with them. Oh, where where are you getting that information from? I was reading it at uh, 
on a what is it the one coast to coast website. Okay. That uh, one of the abductee ladies that wrote a book. It wasn't a uh, Kathleen Martin. It was the other one. I can't think of her name. Okay. A story in there about a lady that was abducted and they're asking where her soul was and she couldn't tell them and they were like really upset with it. That's really interesting. I've I've heard theories that these things are like the grays. They're they're a a a some kind of a drone or something. Yeah, like a cyborg is what I've heard. Yeah, from people that I've know. I know a lot of people who have say they've been abducted, and they say their sense of the the small grays that do the kind of dirty work is that they're not a hundred percent biological. Right. All right. Well. Guys, uh, do you want to, we've been going here now, let's see, it's almost nine o'clock already. Yeah. We're losing time. So you're going to have a big, you're gonna have a big editing job ahead of you. I that. know, right? <laughs> so is, uh, do you guys want to close out with any kind of a uh, statements or? Uh, another thing I just wanted to even just point another thing that got me thinking ever since I met a guy was just like, the location thing and how it's like the same exact location it made me like want to like i mean i've looked on google earth to look at the location um just to see the trees and just the field next to it just to try to judge size um but like it seemed like the houses are right there and it's just like it makes me want to knock on these people's doors because like yeah like how the yeah, hell i thought the same thing how the I, hell i've driven you, out there yeah. i've gone out there yeah it's like how had I mean, if I've seen it, like these people that own the property that it's literally in their backyard, they had to have seen it. If anybody here, but I've been, I've been wanting to put like, think about like trail cameras and everything. Yes. I was just thinking that we should all go out there and March and for the whole month of March. <laughs> yeah, just go, camp, go, go camping. Go camping. There's a, there's, right, right, right before these trees, right? There's a long mode field that's an ultralight landing field that's been there for years. And we could camp there. We could set up some tents. And, you know. Yeah. That'd be fun. And never be, heard, like never be heard from again or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that would, that would not go well. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Ed. Any closing words or anything you want to, uh, to say before we wrap this up? I'm going to keep working on that extra witness for you. Hit him up on an email. He's waiting here back. Okay. If I do, I said I had to get a hold of you. That's awesome. That'd be yeah, he awesome. was a teenager when it happened. And there's going to be an event coming up too that Ray Samansky is going to be uh, hosting at the Dexter Library. Uh, so more information will will come out on that. But he's going to do a lecture out there, and I will be out there. Michelle can't make it, but I'm going to go out there, and the, some people from our group are going to go out there as well to support him and. Uh, go listen to his talk. So, because he show up out there with guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you guys can make it, you definitely want to try to get out there. Um, it's around the twentieth or the twenty first. Twentieth, so yeah, yeah. It's a Tuesday night. Yeah. So, uh, we'll put more information out there once he uh, he'll contact me and and let me know exactly what's going on. But apparently, you're going to have to call and reserve a spot because of the whole COVID thing. So, um, yeah, anyways, the coof. The so, coof. yeah. So Ed <laughs> is going to be looking for a, or trying to get a Dexter witness on, which would be awesome. All right, guy jumping over to you. Any, uh, anything coming up with you? Are you going on any other podcast? Uh, I'm going in Tuesday to have a stent put in my, in a, in a collapsed artery in my leg. So just wish me luck. I'm nervous. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to get that behind me. I'm pretty scared of this. I don't like medical stuff. I want to take this opportunity though, to thank you and Michelle for starting the group and having a podcast and thank Alex and Ed an awful lot because, uh, this stuff is kind of lonely and weird and uh, yes, meant an awful lot to me that they stepped forward and uh, reached out to me and I sort of needed it, man, you know, yeah. it an awful lot to me. So I can't well, thank them enough. Can you? Yeah. Uh, well, it's just understanding that you're not, we're not alone in this. Yeah. So, and, and, and 
we've we've all seen i'm convinced it's it's the same craft or the same type of craft just at different times doing different things god knows what um i feel that they've had this hand as the guys from uh brothers of the serpent podcast were saying that they they seem to have this hand you know after you saw it now look what you're doing you're having a podcast you got a huge community on facebook uh and, and this with the five of us talking was not anywhere in my mind that this was going to happen that we would have everybody together talking about basically the same thing it's uh from all across the state i said to my wife this evening before she she left for a while so uh but before before we started the podcast i, I was laying down and i said you know I said it's it's kind of an overstatement, but but having an experience like this is kind of going to war. It's kind of like going to war, you know. Soldiers kind of tend to seek each other out after they've been through a. It's a strange experience that that you have a lot of weird feelings afterwards about you know, like Alex said, you have a lot of questions, you know, yeah. about everything from God to, I mean, you know, and and it just it's just good to connect with people that know you're not, know you're not crazy that have had the same experience or very similar. And uh, that's all. It's, I think it's, I think we're kind of brothers in arms in a strange way, you know? Yeah. And, and that was a, that was a big deal for me and Michelle. Not only did we want people to, to join our group and tell us if they saw the same thing we did, you know, for our own validation, but then to flip that around and be like, okay, people can come here and talk about their experience and not be ridiculed and made fun of, and they could feel like it's a safe place for them to talk. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, and it, it's just gone crazy from there and, uh, it's still mind boggling and interesting. And it, it, drives my curiosity even more and uh, i cannot thank all of you enough uh alex ed guy very very happy to have you guys on board yeah, and here for the interview yep and, thank, uh, you. It, yep. thank it, you gentlemen it was a pleasure spending yes. the evening with you yep so i think with that everybody we're gonna sign off have a good one okay michelle i'm just still completely blown away and my mind is completely messed up thinking about how guy and ed were at the same club the same night and then saw the same craft and never spoke to each other did not know each other until just the past couple weeks that is insane so what i ended up doing was i went on this website and I decided to do a little bit of research of my own. And I wanted to go to the uh, National UFO Reporting Center. And I took the dates that Alex had his sighting, then our sighting, and Guy and Ed, their sighting. So I looked it up. And one of the first things I found is that that's a pretty big database, but it's not all-encompassing. But you are able to look at things based on the shape of the aircraft or the UFO. And out of all the reports, 12,199 reports, all are triangular shape craft. So I started with Alex and his date of March 23rd, 2019. So I looked around for any sightings that happened that were reported of triangular craft, and I came up with two. So on March 14th, 2019, in Livonia, it was reported that a triangular craft was seen for three minutes. This is their report. It says, the craft was triangle in shape. It had a light at each corner of the triangle. When passed overhead, it had a complete circle of white lights that encompassed most of the surface of the craft. It was too dark to see the color of the craft. The craft made no noise. It hovered over a house very closely, 
before turning and flying to the center of my acreage. It then hovered on an angle and flew west about an acre. It turned back east and flew about an acre before turning southwest to fly off over the lake. It was slow moving at first and then sped up dramatically. And that's all that was in that report. On 3-15, so March 15th, 2019, in Bloomfield Township, they say that this happened with them for approximately 20 minutes. They say it was sort of triangular with rounded edges. Saw it moving in different directions, not a huge distance up and down side to side. So I don't know what they mean by that, but... It's just the way they typed it in. At one point, it seemed to move closer, at which point I saw other flashes of light to the left of the craft. It was a smaller object very close to my neighbor's roof flashing white lights. I almost thought it was a small drone, but as soon as the small one showed up, the large craft seemed to get further and further away. Two raccoons also climbed on my neighbor's roof looking to check it out. Once lights disappeared, the raccoons climbed down the tree and went inside as to not be in danger of them. So it sounds like the raccoons knew to get the hell out of there. (laughs) It's like getting out of dodge. They're the smart ones. Hard to say in these times if we are seeing UFOs or drones or military craft. However, this one behaved very different as if traveling in flashes, not miles per hour. So that's kind of crazy because that's how Ed saw his craft over there in KPEC disappear. He said it was like Star Trek. They just kind of poof, disappeared in a flash of light. So now there's our incident that we had. The triangular UFO that we saw on March 9th, 2018. I went through the database and the one I could find that was closest to our date was on 3-18-2018. This was in Linwood, Michigan. Here's what they say. Low to the ground, just over trees, flying black triangle with white lights around its sides. No sound, moved like a fish in water. That's weird. Just got home from a night of bowling, not drinking, so totally sober. And as we were getting out of the van, I saw, I just so happened to look up at what I thought was a shooting star. When I realized the shooting star was much closer than I originally thought and was moving toward us, I yelled to my son, what the heck is that? He then looked up and saw it. We were so freaked out we continued to yell at each other. What the heck? What? What is that? It seemed to slow down as it got closer to us, almost like it acknowledged that we had noticed it. Then within just a few short seconds, it took off like a fish in water type of movement. It was totally unnatural looking how it moved was just over the tree line, it seemed, and about the size of one of those big green signs you see on the expressway overpasses. So it sounds like, you know, people are writing these and they're just typing it in as fast as they can to get into the database. So I'm just reading it as it appears. Well, and I know even the story that I read tonight through communica- you know, Communication Corner, I had to do a little bit of tweaking when it came to... I had to do a little bit of tweaking when it came to the, like the tenses and stuff like yeah. that. But that's the English teacher in me. Sorry. So it goes on to say here, it was pretty lengthy. Um, when it was directly over our heads, we could make out the shape. It was flat out a triangle shaped object with a triangle shaped white light around the outer edges. It made no sound at all. Dead silent. The stars and clear sky that night made it so that we could see the shape of it once it was directly over our heads with no problem. 
Scared the crap out of us. Still trying to explain it away, but just can't. What the heck was it? I know what drones are and what they look like and perform like. This was no drone, in my opinion. Now, I also looked up anything that was similar to Guy and Ed sighting back on March 18th of 94. So what I found was there was something posted on August 6, 2020, but it was for March 8th, 1994. And this person said that the duration of this was one day. Well, I don't think so. I think it probably just happened one day. But here's what they said, and this is all all they cover. It says, notice this was not in archives. Many people around southwest Michigan from St. Joseph to Holland reported lights and triangle shape and some disc-shaped UFOs. Many people witnessed over a wide range of area. Same thing was reported 28 years earlier, same month. So we do know that in 94, there was a lot of reports of uh, UFOs over Lake Michigan on the west side of the state. Yeah, uh, Battle Creek, Jackson, yes. uh, Grand Rapids area. I heard yeah, a lot of stories. Way out there in 94. 94 was a, a hot year, and we're looking into that and seeing if we can find more information. So another thing I wanted to talk about, too, is that in this panel discussion, Guy brings up having electronic issues with his phone when he's trying to communicate with his one friend, Walt, and uh, having some other problems as well. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because we saw on that show, Skinwalker Ranch on the History Channel, that there were the guys that were having issues with their phones. It seemed to be some type of a magnetic anomaly or some type of stuff going on there where the phone was doing all kinds of things. It almost looked like somebody was running a program to hack a phone. Um, it was really, really bizarre. And that just kind of came to mind that Skinwalker Ranch showing that they were having the same problems with their electronic devices. Um, and now guy after his experience having some issues as well and it seems like the walt guy was having a lot and you had mentioned something about poltergeist yeah well i think of electromagnetic field it, mm -hmm. so is things the that person, can disrupt yes that. anything mm. that can disrupt you know any sort of um you know electrical current right one other thing i wanted to point out too is that ed is had sent me a few articles with dates on them about people seeing UFOs during the 94 time frame. And if you didn't catch it, because the quality, like I said at the beginning of this, Zoom was having some issues. It was having a moment. I don't know why, but maybe it's those tech issues that are following some of us around. But he had sent articles about the Dexter sighting, and these articles were... March 15th, March 16th, March 17th, March 18th. These all these articles came out one day after each other talking about people spotting UFOs. It was uh, kind of amazing and blew me away. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is it seems like listening to Felicia's story and then listening to Alex and Guy, how they were so close to the machine or this craft that the craft told them somehow it warned them off. Get out of here. You don't belong here. However, the females in the car were taken and the one believing that she became pregnant after being abducted. If you look at cattle mutilations and things like that, it always seems like they go for the females as well. And I'm curious now, as do more women report abductions than men? And it just, it makes me wonder if, because we hear about alien hybrids and, and you know, Felicia talking about becoming pregnant. I'm wondering if, if they're interested in the human reproductive system and seeing what they can tinker with. I, I mean, I don't know. Now, it just, 
her story just makes me wonder about the intelligence of her of her child as yes. far as if is there a higher intelligence is there any sort of abnormalities Right. So um, any distinct features that you just kind of tilt your head and go, hmm. Right. Was the kid a math genius at the age of three? You know, yeah, playing chess at two years old mm -hmm. and just absolutely, you know, crushing opponents. Right. So a lot more questions than answers, but still interesting. A lot, lot of stories and well, I guess... I hope everybody enjoyed the panel discussion. I don't know. Hopefully not everyone wakes up at 3.33 a.m. now. Yeah, the, the, the number connection is very, very strange. However, the basis of the universe, if we, if we run into another civilization or an alien or whatever, the first language we're going to speak is going to be math. You know, arithmetic. Just remember the number nine and 333. Three plus three plus three. It is nine. It keeps on coming back to that. It's a, it's a very powerful number. All right, Michelle, I think we're going to wrap it up. This has gone on quite long enough. What do you think? Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to head out for the night, folks. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sleep yeah, well. Remember, <laughs> yeah, sleep well. <laughs> Keep one eye open. And keep your eyes to the sky. You have been listening to the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. You can reach us at mi.ufo.podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at mi underscore UFO and join our Facebook group by searching for Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters. So until next time.